Welcome you guys, I'm your host, Chef Champion of the Chef Champion Cooking Show. It's summertime, summertime. Today we're gonna to be starting off making a fresh watermelon salad with fresh Kamala olives, some Serrano peppers, a little bit of cucumber cuties, and we're gonna finish it with some Italian gorgonzola cheese. We're also gonna be making some New Orleans style blackened catfish, blackened sockeye salmon, and then we're gonna to top that off with a fresh mango salsa. Then we're gonna put on the side some nice Cajun grilled asparagus. We'll be right back. The Chef Champion Show is brought to you by American Kitchen Cookware and Bakeware, Door County Original Cherry Delight, Wustoff Cutlery Made with Fine German Steel, The Original Pit Barrel Cooker, and by Glorious Malone's Fine Sausage. All right, welcome back, you guys. Um, like I said, we're going to be making a nice, fresh um, summer salad. It's always good to use fresh fruit, not just for the summer, but for the winter, too. I'm just going to show you how easy and quick this is. So we're just going to start off with a, a seedless watermelon. And you can use a melon baller or you can just cut them in squares. I'm going to cut them in squares, kind of make it easy for you guys. Always when you're cutting a watermelon, make sure you have a long enough knife. I'm using a nine inch blade. Set this to the side. Sharpen this up quick. All right. Now all we're going to do is just make a few slices, just like so. And I'm slicing them in the inches, then we're going to take that, turn that like so. Slice that right in the middle. All right. So all you want to do is just separate the flesh, just like that, and give it nice little square chunks. And you can play around with this. You don't have to use watermelons. If you want to use cantaloupe or any one of those fresh um, fruits, by all means, go for it. But down south in Louisiana, we love the watermelon. That is the real deal. We just keep repeating the process. All right. So now that we have our watermelon all nice and cut, next thing we're gonna add is some cucumbers. Now I'm using these little cuties instead of the big cu uh, cucumbers. They're a little bit sweeter and got a little bit more bite to it, should I say. So all I wanna do is just cut that off. For those of you guys who don't know, I forgot to teach you a little knife skills, proper way to hold the knife. Three fingers are tucked underneath the handle, and next finger is on the blade, and the thumb is on the blade. Then in my left hand, I'm using the claw, which means that my fingertips are cut, uh, tucked underneath so I don't cut myself. All right, I'll cut that in half, put that all to the side. And then we're gonna cut that half in half, so we have fours. And then we're just gonna make some nice slices, just like so. And add those right into that watermelon salad. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is just add in a few olives. It's up to you if you wanna cut them. I'm just gonna cut a few of them, just to say I cut them. Just give them a nice little rough chop. You can leave them whole if you want to as well, but I'm gonna chop them up just a little bit. Oh, the weather is so nice out here. As you guys see, we're out here at the beautiful Yacht Club. Got a nice backdrop of the lighthouse. You gotta love it out here. This is the way to cook, you guys. Add that to that like so. So I have some halves in there and some holes. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit of fresh blueberries. Like I said, the blueberries are optional. If you're not a blueberry fan, by all means, no need. But I like blueberries. And they're gonna just add such a wonderful color with the fresh watermelon. I'm gonna add a serrano pepper. A serrano pepper is not as hot as your typical jalapeno pepper. And I wanna add a little bit of heat to this watermelon salad, but I don't wanna burn nobody's mouth. So I'm just gonna add a little bit. As you see, there's a little bit of that seed in there. Go ahead and get that out. That's where all your heat is. And like I said, we want a little bit of kick, but we definitely don't want to make it too spicy. And then with these, all we want to do is just make slices very, very thin. You know, the rule of thumb of dice is all you have to do is slice it, turn it at a 90 degree angle, slice it again. Voila, you have diced. Turn that at a 90 degree angle, slice that. Oh, that wind is feeling good right now. That should be enough. And we're gonna add that to that like so. We're gonna take our nice sweet red onion, add that to it. I love sweet onions, you guys, especially in the summertime. For, for those of you guys that don't know, onions are super, super healthy for you. Um, very good for your blood pressure too as well. So a cool way to cut this, I found out. 
All I'm gonna do is make slices, but I'm not slicing all the way through the onion. I'm leaving just a little bit intact because I definitely don't want to chase this onion around. I want to get nice uniform cuts. There's nothing worse than bad presentation, let me tell you. Then we're gonna slice those nicely. We're gonna add that right to our salad. Looking good already. So last thing, second to the last thing we wanna add is some of this fresh gorgonzola blue cheese. Um, I'm using the brand Belgioso. They make the best um, Italian cheeses. But I, by all means, you can use any blue cheese. Feta cheese works great, but I'm using this gorgonzola today. I'm gonna add all that to it. There we go. All right, so the last thing we wanna add, well, second to the last thing, is a little bit of key lime juice. Now you can use a fresh lemon or a fresh lime, but I love the taste of key limes. So I'm just gonna add a little couple drizzles of that in there. I would say that's probably about a tablespoon and a half. And then I'm just using some Moscato wine. And I'm just gonna use that to give it a little bit more body, a little bit of flavor, add a little bit of sweetness to it. Won't get you drunk, <laughs> so don't, don't expect that, please. But it'll definitely add a nice little flavor. And now very carefully, we just wanna give that a nice mix and a nice toss just like so. I can smell all of those flavors bonding together right now. Um, mainly that key lime. That key lime is really working with all these other ingredients. All right. So then for our presentation bowl, and this salad serves, you can serve this as a first course um, or you can serve it as a dessert course. It goes either way. I'm gonna give them a big bowl. Oh yeah, looking good. And then to top it all off, I didn't add any today, but definitely if you wanna add a little bit of fresh mint, that'll give it a nice little bite too as well. That definitely works out well with a watermelon salad. All right. Well, there you have it, you guys, your fresh watermelon salad. Um, when we come back, we're gonna go ahead and get started on our pit barrel. I'm gonna show you how to make some of this blackened um, salmon and some blackened catfish from Louisiana. We'll be right back. As a mother, I choose healthy snacks for my children. What they eat now can have a lasting effect on their overall health. Cherry Delight dried cherries provide a healthy snack and taste delicious. Unlike sugary treats, these tasty fruit snacks are all natural and provide essential nutrients and vitamins important in growing bodies. From chocolate covered Cherry Delights to tart cherry juice, these snacks are full of nutrition. Order Cherry Delight online. Gift boxes are also available. Go to countryovens.com. There's no better recipe for great times and good food and good company right in your own backyard. Pit Barrel Cooker makes grilling simple and fun, taking out all the guesswork. Great for grilling, smoking, and searing. Your neighbors are sure to be impressed. The Pit Barrel Cooker is the newest phenomenon in the outdoor cooking world. Visit pitbarrel.com today and join the Barrelution. Finally, we can all cook like champions. All right, welcome back everybody. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get started right away on that blackened seafood that I was telling you about. Um, today we're gonna be using sockeye salmon. Whenever I use salmon, I always love to use the wild salmon. Um, you can use fresh uh, uh, farm raised, which is, uh, I wanna say Atlantic salmon. It's just not the same as wild. It's kinda like, you know, the difference between lake perch and ocean perch. Um, it can be a little bit pricey. They, they are a couple other different salmons you can use, Norwegian salmon, other ones like that. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take that skin off. And I know traditionally when people cook salmon, they leave that skin on there to add just that extra little uh, fat on there. I'm not a fan of leaving the skin on there because guess what? Then you can't season both sides. And I love a flavorful piece of fish. So we're gonna take that off like so. All right. So the main thing you wanna do too with salmon, face that off. As you see in the middle, there's that little brown spot. It's not good for eating, so we want to try and cut that out. I'm just going to take my knife and just go at a V-shaped angle on both sides. Whoop. 
getting kind of windy out here. All right. So now that we got that off there, now I can see from both sides. Face that off a little bit. All right. So my season that I'm going to be using, I'm using a blackened seafood seasoning. Um, I love to use seasoning blends that are already mixed for me. I'm not a fan of using 15 different ingredients. Um, so you can go ahead and use any of your uh, blackened seasoning. You can get this at your local grocery store or your local uh, cooking store. So whenever you're blackening anything or seasoning it, you want to season it heavenly a lot. It's going to seem like you're over seasoning it, but you're not, trust me. You can also do this with traditional Cajun season, but the, the seafood blend tends to not be as strong as the Cajun blend. All right. And then the last thing uh, that I want to add, I want to add just a little bit of fresh basil to that, just to give it a little color. Give it a little basil, and then we're just going to hit it with a little bit of liquid smoke. Now, even though we're using the pit barrel, that's going to create a lot of nice, good smoke. You always want to give it a little bit of help. So we're going to add a little bit of mesquite liquid smoke right on that, just like so. Pat that down. Always make sure you get both sides because we want both sides of full flavor, right? So then with my uh, grill plank that I'm using, you can use any type of wood grill plank. Um, today I'm using cedar, which works excellent. I soaked these for uh, probably about an hour, and now I'm just going to add a little bit of this avocado oil right onto the plank like so. Add that right to the plank. Look at that. Fits perfectly. And then we're going to set that nicely right in our pit barrel. And I got my coals going probably about 40 minutes ago, so always make sure when you guys are grilling outside, make sure you get your coals nice and hot before you start grilling. You definitely don't want to be waiting around. So I decided to do a couple of different fish just to show you how versatile this could be. Um, in Louisiana, we love us some catfish. That is probably the staple um, in all of Louisiana. So I'm going to show you guys how to make some blackened catfish. So like I said, we're going to add in that blackening season. Heavenly. A lot. You want to fully coat the fish. And for you guys at home, you know, if you if you don't have a grill, a pit barrel, and you you know, you can definitely do this inside. I would recommend if you're going to do this in the oven, turn your oven probably on about 375, and you can bake these off for probably about 15 minutes, and you should. It won't be as good as a grill. Let me tell you, the grill is some good stuff, but it will definitely be good. Add a little bit of that liquid smoke, both sides, like always. And then we're going to add some of that basil too as well. That basil is really just going to wake that fish up and give it a nice, nice color. And we're going to add that right to our grill planks, like so. And that's going to go right on the grill. Just like so. All right. And then I'm going to be using one of these nice little grill mats. We're going to go ahead and set that in there and let that get nice and hot. And that's what we're going to use to grill our asparagus. But we're going to wait on that because asparagus only takes a couple of minutes. So I lid on there and keep that cocked and run. Glorious Malone's gourmet head cheese and country pâtés are southern deliciousness. Tender pork, blended spices, and bold flavors. Superbly handcrafted fresh, without fillers, jellies, or preservatives. Glorious Malone's quality flavors have been loved throughout the Midwest for over 60 years. Enjoy it sliced on crackers, or think outside the cracker. Try it on pizza, burgers, stuffed pork, and more. Ask your grocer for Malone's. Mmm, southern deliciousness. I came in initially for um, lower neck pain and back pain, headaches. Whiplash. Migraine headaches. I have never used chiropractic here before. I was very nervous. I decided to choose a back in action. Something amazing happened. Dr. Hansen has actually made some other improvements that I was not seeing him for. It wasn't actually back issues, but it was a nutritional issue. Dr. Hansen, he goes above and beyond. They're very thorough. I would highly recommend using back in action with Dr. Hansen. And relief is, is sooner than you think. Experience the bottle room with the most unique craft beer, wine, and cocktail list in the area. Open for lunch and dinner, it's a perfect setting for date night, girls night, or your private event. Experience what's inside the bottle.
All right, that looks like that's cooking pretty good. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get started on our mango salsa. Um, before we do that, I'll go ahead and throw on some of this asparagus. All I did with the asparagus is obviously I cut off the end parts. I uh, marinate this with basic Italian seasoning with some garlic, put it in a Ziploc bag, squeeze all the air out of it, and then let this marinate overnight. And then that way you can cook it and you don't have to cook it as long because the vinaigrette in there is gonna actually act as a cooking agent too as well. So we're gonna throw these right down on our grill. And as you see, I have that little, um, this little liner right here to keep the asparagus from going in the grill. And we're just gonna dump that on there just like so. Move these around just a little bit. And asparagus is not gonna take long, so please don't think that this is gonna uh, cook in 20 minutes. As you see how I'm doing it, I put the fish in first, and as the fish is cooking, when the fish is almost done, then I add the asparagus. So please don't go home and add the asparagus first. I know you wanna go ahead and get that cooked right away, but that's always the last thing that you wanna cook. Go ahead and throw our lid on there and go ahead and get started on this mango salsa, quick and easy. First thing you wanna do is go ahead and just square off your mango. Whenever you're picking a mango, you want one that's a little bit soft, but a little bit firm. If it's too firm, that means it's not all the way ripe. If it's too soft, that means it's, it's overripe. So there's a little core on that, so I just kinda wanna cut around as best as possible. And I know some places you might not have fresh mangoes. Can you use frozen mangoes? Yeah, you can. Um, they're gonna be a little bit softer, so you know, you're gonna have to be a little bit more delicate with them, but that's okay. And then we're just gonna make cubes. So like I told you before, in order to make cubes, just slice them, turn it at a 90 degree angle and slice them again. And that's why I like cutting them like this, because then I can cut them right to the angle that I want, versus if you get them frozen, they're already cubed up on you, and it's gonna be kinda hard to dice when you got something that's already cubed up. Now we're gonna just add in a little bit of red sweet onion. And then I'm just gonna slice them. Once I have them sliced, turn it at a 90 degree angle, slice them again, now I have dice. All right, go ahead and add that to our mixture. Then we're gonna be adding a red bell pepper. Now you can add a green one, that's fine. The green isn't gonna be as sweet, and because I'm using a sweet mango, I kind of want to keep everything nice and sweet. That's why I'm using a sweet red onion. So a quick and easy way. Always make sure when you're slicing through anything that has a hard back, slice through the soft part first. So we're just going to make small slices. And as you guys see, I'm using the right knife. I'm using an 8-inch chef knife. So all those people at home that are using that little bitty knife, yeah, put that knife up and get a real knife. That knife is, uh, the little bitty knife is good for small jobs, but you're never gonna get the cut, you're never gonna get the presentation. Add just a little bit more to that. So then we're gonna have some fresh green onions or chives, some people call them chives, kind of the same difference. And we're just gonna slice those pretty thin. And that's gonna give it a nice little crunch, give it a little bite. And the greenness with all the different bright colors are just gonna mesh so well together. As you see, this is a very colorful salsa. All right, we're gonna throw those right in there, just like so. All right, so then the last herb that we're gonna add is some fresh cilantro. And whenever you're cutting leafy herbs, always remember, rule of thumb, get rid of these stems. Stems are not made to eat. They don't taste very good at all. So whenever you're cutting leafy vegetables, just put them in a nice little ball like that. Try and get them as dry as possible because the more moist they are, the more you're gonna wanna smash them. And then I'm just gonna slice right through. And cilantro, I, I would say anytime you're making a, a salsa, add cilantro to it. It's, it's just gonna wake it up so much. All right, I'm gonna add that cilantro like so. And I always wanna add just a little bit of heat. So I'm gonna use a little bit of Slap Your Mama hot sauce. You can use a jalapeno pepper, serrano pepper, anything you want, or you can just add a little bit of hot sauce to that. And then we just wanna go ahead and give that a nice little toss. I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of this avocado oil in there, just because I can. They're trying to get away from me. All right, and that is your mango salsa. Look how colorful that is. 
So while that's going, I'm gonna go ahead and get checking all my fish and my asparagus. I think that's almost done. When we come back, we'll go ahead and put it all together and I'll see if I can find some people out here on the boat yard that wants to taste some of this food. So we'll be right back. Chef Champion here with an American Kitchen quick cooking tip. Visualization, I can't stress to you enough on how important it is. Remember, it all starts with a vision. You must first visualize in yourself, in your mind, what you wanna do, how you wanna do it before you do it. When you do this, it takes away a lot of stress that can seem to come into the kitchen. So like I said, visualize, and when I say that, you're only using your imagination. So take your imagination to the next level. That's another American Kitchen quick cooking tip. All right, welcome back. I think it's that time, you guys. I think it's time to eat. Let's go ahead and check on this salmon and blackened catfish. I've probably been having this roll on the pit barrel for, oh, I want to say about a good 25 to 30 minutes. Always remember, if you guys are using wood planks, soak them. Soak them for at least overnight because it's really the steam that's cooking it and not actually the wood. All right, everything's looking good on there. We'll go ahead and uh, grab our spatula. Glove. Safety's first, you guys. Always remember, if you guys are working with anything hot, get you some uh, some grilling gloves. Uh, pit Barrel made it good for us. They provided these with my Pit Barrel. Um, don't try and do what I used to do back in Louisiana and use a grill rag or a dish rag. It will burn you. So we're just going to lift these up like so. And as you guys see, all the protein, all the nice juices and oils has kind of just rolled to the top. So you got your nice, even cook. Just gonna lay those on the side just like that. All right. Check out our catfish. I know uh, people in the Midwest, they act like they've never heard of catfish before, but man, let me tell you, this is the way to go. And it's cheaper. All right, just like so. And it looks like, oh, I'll tell you what, the best way to tell when your asparagus is done, <laughs> it's just to taste it. And that seemed like it's almost done, but it's missing one important ingredient, the seasoning. Hmm. Might add a little bit of slap your mom and Cajun season right to the grill. And by the time I put this mango salsa on, that should be done. Presentation is everything, right? I know sometimes you guys are cooking and grilling all day long. The last thing you want to do is spend time with presentation, but this is your chance to show off. You know, if you've been cooking all day long, you want people to know what you've been doing. Just get your nice little mole. Just nice. That sits just like though. Always make sure you remember, just serve you a side bowl of the mango salsa because some people might really want a lot of salsa. Some people might not want that much. So make sure you do that. Then we'll go ahead and pull these asparagus off the grill. I think they're done now. Oh yeah. You guys never had grilled asparagus, let me tell you, it's the way to go. Nice garlicky Cajun asparagus. All right. Well, there you have it, you guys. We, we started off with our fresh watermelon um, salad, and then we made a nice mango salsa to go with our blackened fish. Um, we have the blackened sockeye salmon with the skin removed, don't forget that, and then our Cajun blackened catfish too as well. And then obviously don't forget your grilled asparagus. Now I promised that I would try and find someone to taste this because you know, tasting my own food, you can't really get a good act on that. So I, I think I found a couple of nice people out here at the, at the yacht club. They're gonna go ahead and try some of this food. Come on up. <laughs> I will take care of you. We are ready. All right. Oh, this has smelled so good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank right. you. Put a couple pieces of asparagus on there for you. And would you like some mango salsa? Of course. There you go. Oh. There you go. You enjoy that. I will.
You guys always remember it. You can cook, you can have a good time anywhere, indoor, outdoor. Just always remember when you're cooking, try to have a positive attitude, positive energy. Enjoy what you're doing, you know. You gotta cook and eat anyway, so why not enjoy it? That's our show out here at the Yacht Club. I'll see you guys next week.